Okay, so um, welcome everyone. Uh, this is the um, Birth Institute lecture series. Uh, my name is Jie Chen. I'm a connect matter theorist here. Our speaker today is Professor Xiao Gang Wen, who on the other hand, I don't think need any introduction. Um, so uh, we'll just, um, uh, we're very happy to uh, have Xiao Gang with us. Uh, he's actually doing a sabbatical here until mid-April. So if you want to uh, uh, chat with him. He's uh, sitting in bridge in office. Um, I, I forgot the number. So you'll find him along the bridge. I think he's sitting somewhere along there. Um, and we're going to have uh, the lecture series every Friday at this time, 1.30 uh, until 3 um, um, throughout the winter quarter. So there, there might be a couple of weeks where we'll yeah. uh, um, cancel the class, but almost every class for the winter quarter. Uh, and uh, the, the, the class is also hosted on Zoom. Here's the Zoom ID and for everyone on Zoom, welcome as well. And the lecture will be recorded um, on Zoom and will be uh, the recording will be posted uh, on the PMA website. Uh, some YouTube website, I was told. Um, and uh, that's all. That's all I want to say. And uh, with all those views, uh, please. Yeah, thank you, Xie. Uh, yeah, I really uh, appreciate this uh, arrangement. And uh, for my visit to Caltech, which is very warm weather, and also arrangement, uh, Xie and uh, uh, Hiroshi uh, for arranging this uh, lecture series. Uh, so in this uh, lecture series, uh, uh, I plan to talk about uh, uh, mainly the generalized uh, symmetry, which it seems to be uh, important. It turns out that the generalized symmetry is not described by group but described by something else, which happened to be tabloid order. So that's also giving me a chance uh, to discuss uh, uh, some, uh, some, some related uh, issue about the uh, tabloid order. Yeah, certainly uh, why you want to study generalized symmetry, why that is uh, useful. And uh, so basically, so here's the motivation, you know, we want to study quantum matter, basically quantum metabolic body system in thermodynamic uh, uh, limit. So there are three kinds of uh, quantum matter. And uh, we can say that there's a gap, the one, which have no low energy excitation. So such like uh, they can be band insulator, a quantum half state, and those kinds of uh, gap uh, quantum matter. Uh, there are also a gapless one uh, with, a, with, a, with a few excitation, not too many. And uh, so the example of this would be this, uh, uh, like a direct semi metal, a wire of some metal, a superfluid, the critic point, the continuous free transition, uh, those kind of uh, thing, if we call the gapless uh, state. But those gapless states turns out to be so called the liquid, the concept, which I will introduce uh, 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 in a moment. But it's not ordinary liquid, but there's a far more liquid. There's another kind of gapless matter we call non liquid which have a lot of excitation and uh, which is a uh, kind of beyond the quantum field theory. So the liquid uh, gapless matter are within quantum field theory, but the non-liquid is beyond the quantum field theory. And uh, so they like, like a Fermi metal or Boston metal, or those kind of things. And uh, so uh, certainly those kind of uh, uh, quantum matter can be divided into two class, either weakly correlated or strongly correlated, or weakly interacting or strongly interacting or maybe say the easier or uh, hard. So that's kind of a, uh, also belong to this uh, two, two class. So uh, so for the weakly uh, correlated uh, gap states, uh, generally we just have a band theory, you know. The band theory just, uh, just uh, mainly emphasizing on this uh, eigenvalue, we got a dispersion relation. However, if you also worry about the eigenvector, then the eigenvalue may be twisted in the brain zone. So, and this twisting may be described by K theory that's led to the topological insulator. So, that's a more complete uh, theory for gapless gap theory. So, this kind of dispersion, we have a gap. And uh, so, there's also weakly correlated gapless uh, uh, liquid state. And uh, so, like a band theory with the direct points, or you have a kind of boson condensation, it's a superfluid mode. And those things are generally described by quantum quantum field theory. Okay, 
So then we also have this uh, weakly correlated uh, gapless non-liquid state. It turns out that uh, the Fermi liquid is an example of this non-liquid quantum states. Okay. And uh, for weakly correlated boson system, yeah, actually we don't know an example have this uh, 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 gapless non-liquid states. Uh, it's interesting to see if you have some example of a weakly correlated system. Yeah, yeah sure. Just why Fermi liquid is a non-liquid state? Of what is yeah, it's a, it's a, the liquid usually defined as a, it don't have no shape. But here, uh, the liquid is defined via quantum information point of view. So, uh, so I, later I will, I, I will define that. And uh, then, and this definition, the Fermi liquid is not liquid. Okay. And uh, so it's kind of, uh, it's kind of funny. So, so it's a, uh, Actually, Fermi liquid is a, is a, I think more important to say that Fermi liquid is not quantum field theory. That's also a strange thing to say uh, because, uh, well, free Fermi uncertainty is quantum field theory. But when you have a Fermi surface, you ask for the low energy effective quantum field theory for the Fermi surface alone without thinking about the whole band. Then things become very tricky. Actually, there is a quantum field theory for that, but you find you need an infinite number of fields. So actually, these non-liquid states turns out that their 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 infrared effective theory uh, usually have infinite num infinite number of fields. So they are really belong to a quite different beast, and uh, so uh, it's more complicated. So so therefore, uh, all the Fermi liquid almost is a, is the first thing we teach in solid state physics, but actually it's uh, maybe the last thing we understand. <laughs> So it's a, it's a very it's more complicated than than those uh, gapless uh, liquid states. So we make this di distinction because uh, uh, in this lecture, so we mainly talk about the gapless uh, liquid states. So so we kind of exclude Fermi liquid, which is uh, more complicated. And uh, so there's also uh, uh, for then for the strongly correlated matter, certainly we have a strongly correlated gap of the states. So uh, a simple example of that would be this uh, Ginsburg-Lana theory uh, for symmetry breaking. Then we have a group theory to describing them. That's a mathematical foundation. Okay. However, we also have a highly entangled liquid state. For those highly entangled gap liquid states, then things are more complicated. So group, group theory is no longer enough. So therefore the, the Ginsburg-Lana theory is replaced by this topological quantum field theory, and the group theory is replaced by this category theory. So there are some category theories that are entering into the into the picture. So that is a, a that is strongly correlated uh, uh, gap states. But here the we need a we need a new mathematics really because uh, we are dealing with uh, entanglement. They are highly entangled quantum entanglement has a much richer structure. So that beyond the symmetry, so we need that. Then we have these strongly correlated gapless states. And the typical example of this is a one plus one dimensional conformal field theory. Okay. And uh, so they're describing the critical point at continuous phase transition. But here we really have very poor knowledge in the, in the, in the higher dimension. In higher dimension, we don't have a general theory. And uh, I may say, well, we, we have quantum field theory in any dimension, so why they describe a gapless state? So why we say we don't have no general theory? The thing is that uh, 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 for gapless state, for gapless liquid states, if there is a well-defined non-quantum quasi particle, then they belong to weakly correlated version. So then we have a theory. Then when we say strongly correlated gapless liquid states, I mean the liquid state with no quasi-particle. There's no low energy non-interacting quasi-particle. Everything is strongly interacting. So certainly you can choose a quantum field to describe them where quantum field are strongly interacting, but this quantum field doesn't help you. It's just a, it's a mess. And so, so basically I try to say that this gapless quantum, gapless liquid state is described by a quantum field theory with no field. 
we don't know with no proper choice of field. So basically it's just a, I'd rather say no quantum field theory description. Yeah. So no Lagrangian or no good Lagrangian. So, so it's more, more of this kind of a thing. So, so, so amazingly in one plus one dimension, there's algebraic approach using conformal field theory. This uh, some of our, so algebra, we can, we can deal with this kind of uh, uh, a gaply state with no quasi particle using algebraic way, not using field theory way. And, uh, and this kind of thing is lacking in higher dimension. I think that, that actually that's the main motivation of this lecture. I don't have answer for that, but uh, I hope uh, some picture developed from this, uh, uh, this point view may help us develop this uh, continuum field theory with no field and, uh, and uh, some way to deal with this capitalist liquid states with no quasi particle. So that's uh, maybe the uh, main motivation. Then certainly we also have a, a strongly correlated the gapless uh, non-liquid states. And uh, well, actually I think, I don't think I really have an example of that. As, uh, uh, so there are some strongly interacting boson system with emerging fermion. And emerging fermion have a fermion surface. So we may call this a, a strongly correlated bosonic system, which is not uh, liquid. But, uh, but the fermion surface means we have non-interacting fermion cross particle that more or less also weakly interacting. So do we have a truly strongly interacting uh, non-liquid state? I don't know, but, but that's also something very desired because uh, uh, in high TC superconductor, uh, we have this, uh, we seem to have a Fermi surface, but it looks like uh, the, 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 the relaxation time is uh, comparable to the quasi particle energy. So quasi particle is not very well defined. So there's a desire to develop this uh, uh, non-Fermi liquid theory. And uh, so this non-Fermi liquid theory in some sense is like a strongly correlated uh, non-liquid gap state, but without well-defined quasi particle, whether such thing can exist or can be formulated. Oh, sorry. So, uh, so therefore this, uh, yeah, go ahead. Independent liquid states, they strongly correlated. You don't mean uh, having both infinities. You mean still featureless states? Or... Uh, yeah, right now, the, the liquid and non liquid, uh, basically, I think at this stage, you can understand that. So, do you have a Fermi surface or not? So, non liquid would be no Fermi. Non liquid means uh, with a Fermi surface, and the liquid means uh, you have a Fermi point. You have the Lorentz symmetry. So those are in, in entanglement structure are easier in some sense. When you have a Fermi surface, the entanglement structure is more complicated. So that's reflected uh, in the uh, in the fact that uh, the low energy effective quantum field theory should contain infinite number of fields. And, and so you're mentioning that the gapless non-liquid non state. Having a Fermi surface where the quasi particles are ill defined because their lifetime is so short. Yeah. Can it, is it, um, would it be common, you would think, to, uh, or not, to have other connected modes that are known to them? Okay, yeah, that's a, that's an interesting thought. Maybe there's some other track mode which are like quasi particle like. Yeah, like then, then we can, that means that we should not use a Fermi, we should use other track mode to do that. But sometimes uh, maybe there's no other track mode. Yeah, or, or maybe there are, but we don't know. And uh, yeah, and I think in, in conformal field theory, we do have an example that uh, there's no other collector mode. Yeah. So it's a spin on Fermi surface, an example. Yeah, the spin on Fermi surface will be this strongly correlated bosonic system, but which is non liquid. So that means uh, their entanglement structure actually is, uh, is more complicated than the than, than euro critical point, things like that. The Fermi surface, uh, indeed, uh, is a new feature, and uh, it's, a, it's a more complicated feature. And if we have a quasi particle near Fermi surface, we, then we have a theory. If you don't have a quasi particle, then, then it becomes more complicated theory. And uh, so, uh, so, 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 so this time I try to focus on this uh, gapless liquid state, which are simpler. Uh, whether what we learn from this gapless liquid state can help us to uh, to learn this uh, non-liquid state with a Fermi surface, 
Uh, I don't know. Yeah, but that's a may, maybe. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a thing. So those basically kind of a, a kind of a overview of what we have, and uh, so uh, so so then uh, so, so so then we try to continue this so-called gapless liquid state. Basically, it's a it's a, a state with a Lorentzian have this uh, Lorentz symmetry, rough something like that. And uh, so the question is, uh, how do we develop a general theory for gapless liquid state? That's the question. The first thing we need to know is we need to have it. So just find a label. We have to give them a name. If there's a several of those gapless liquid state, we should give each of them a name. But not a name like a face A, face B, face C. You know, it's something more informative name. Okay. So what is the what is the proper name to to name them? So actually, we are we are facing the same difficulty when we try to study topology algebra, how to give them a proper names. And here looks like uh, uh, the, the the one way to give them name is using symmetry. You know that uh, uh, at the low energy effective theory, you will have a more symmetry than the lattice uh, UV theory. So uh, so so they, maybe this uh, this emerging symmetry probably can can characterize these uh, gapless states. And in recent years, there's a lot of development. And uh, we find that uh, this emerging symmetry can be very rich. You know, it can be the ordinary symmetry, uh, can be this uh, anomalous symmetry, uh, can be the higher form symmetry, or anomalous higher form symmetry, or algebraic higher symmetry. But algebraic really means non-invertible. So some symmetry is even not invertible. So all these kind of a crazy symmetry and their anomalous version, and so so this this became very rich. So we we kind of so here we I just collectively refer those all those symmetry as a generalized symmetry invertible higher they all kind of generalized uh, symmetry. So because of this uh, generalized symmetry is very very rich, so that's uh, it is so rich. And uh, so then we start to dreaming, you know, maybe this uh, generalized symmetry is not only characterize the gapless states, maybe it's even fully characterized the gapless states. At the moment, this thing is too strong, probably don't fully, but uh, maybe largely, you know, we don't miss too much. And, uh, but, uh, and, uh, but on the other hand, whatever we miss, we can call them the missing part uh, a more, even more general symmetry, you know. So then at the end, the statement is still true. The general symmetry characterizes gapless states fully. Okay. And uh, so, uh, so, 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 therefore, using so, so the idea is that using this generalized emerging symmetry as a starting point to formulate a theory for gapless liquid states. So that is a desire. Okay. So we know that the ordinary symmetry is described by group. So, so what theory describes other generalized symmetry, all those symmetry? Then it turns out that uh, those, those, uh, all those uh, generalized symmetry can be described by so-called non-invertible gravitational anomaly. And which actually is uh, almost the same as a topology order in one higher dimension. So, so this is really uh, uh, the statement I make at the beginning that uh, all those general symmetry is not described by group, but by something we already know. It's a it's a by topological order in one higher dimension or TKFT of of tensor category or something like that. So that is a, a kind of a mathematical formalism to describe this uh, general symmetry, and then this. Uh, uh, then this, uh, so maybe this, uh, this uh, gap, maybe this gapless states can be described in this way. Physically, it turns out that uh, uh, using topology order to characterize a symmetry, uh, using symmetry to characterize a gapless states, is basically like uh, saying that uh, the general theory for gapless liquid state is actually the boundary theory of a topology order in one higher dimension. Yeah. So once you know the symmetry, you can identify topology order in one higher dimension. The boundary of that topology order actually describes your, your gapless states. And so, so this is kind of a, a physical con uh, connection. So therefore, this study of a gapless state became a study of a boundary, gapless boundary of a topology order. So these, these two things may be very, very closely related. 
So that is a, a basically is a it's kind of a, a, a picture and a program. We see whether they can. Yeah, at the moment it's just a beginning, so we hope they can run through it and see whether they can uh, let us somewhere. So yeah. Uh, that is even beyond this program. Fermi surface is a non liquid. Right now, we don't touch a non liquid. So, so we try to say there's a critical point, the phase transition, critical point of phase transition coming from the boundary of the large order. And uh, let me put this way. The boundary, gapless boundary of the double edge order can fully cover all the possible critical points of phase transition. So this is a desire uh, uh, the statement we, we try to make. Yeah. So, so, so the question I have to ask is, would that be a unique description? Or is it possible that it's also a boundary theory for a different kind of? Yeah, this is a, uh, yeah, this is a, a a uh, very good question. I hope to address this question maybe in, in my seventh, eighth, or ninth lecture. <laughs> but, but since you ask, so basically it's really falling that uh, certainly given topology order, there's many, many boundary. Okay, so there's many, many gapless boundary of thin topology order. Seems uh, this uh, is impossible to use that picture to describe gap states. But however, the, 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 the point is that uh, if given topology order, there's a maybe a uh, Maybe one uh, gapless boundary which have a fewest excitation. Okay. And but uh, no condensation, which uh, which I will describe later. And uh, so there's a there's a one canonical boundary of topology other with the fewest excitation. So that that one maybe is had I have maybe close to one to our correspondence with a topology order in the box. So the, the canonical boundary of topology order and topology order may have a close to one-to-one -one correspondence. <laughs> but there's many other boundary with a more gapless excitation. But that one, you can say that that one, we do not discover all the emergent symmetry. That one has a more emergent symmetry. Actually, the same gapless theory can be boundary of a bigger topology order. So, so there's a small, big correspondence in it. Uh, for given for the given gapless state, we want to find the biggest topology or the biggest symmetry. Uh, for the same symmetry, we want to find the, the smallest gapless state, which uh, which don't have any other emerging symmetry. So with this kind of uh, setting, maybe there's a one to one correspondence. But at the moment, we cannot claim it's one to one because uh, the example we know is not one to one. <laughs> but maybe one to a few. If one to a few, that's already a progress and. Uh, and uh, this additional ambiguity we have to study. What is uh, this additional ambiguity and whether we should uh, assign in additional emergent symmetry or whatever, you know. But that's kind of some kind of working in progress. Yeah. But that's really a, a very good question. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I guess uh, I'm frequently here that our theory is an anomaly, for example, we really need to be realized on the surface of. High dimensional something. Yeah. Say the uh, Ising transition in three dimension. It's realized in a three dimensional system. Do you mean that somehow, I, I guess it has emergent symmetry, which is. Yeah. The, so maybe I think we're going to talk about the, the, the Ising transition in one plus one dimension. So the, we can view this as a boundary of a two plus one dimensional tabula order. And because I think model have little symmetry, this topology will be very simple, just a little gate theory, the boundary of little gate theory. And uh, so there's a little theory has a canonical gapless boundary, which corresponds to I think critical point. So that's, that, that, that is kind of a, a thing. I hope this picture works in a higher dimension, but in higher dimension, we, again, we don't have a, a much example. Uh, but uh, uh, we have a lot of examples in one plus one dimension, quantum field theory and two plus one dimensional uh, topological theory. Uh, so you mean that, that it has uh, 
Uh, yeah, yeah. So the, in, in two parts, one, so again, in one part, I think transition, uh, I mentioned that uh, it's, a, it's a box topology order is a is little gauge theory. But this little gauge theory do not reflect all the emerging symmetry. There's a additional emerging symmetry in a icing critical point in one plus one dimension. And uh, so actually the, 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 the larger topology order describing all the emerging symmetry is believed to be double icing topology order in, in, in two plus one dimension. However, uh, for two plus dimension icing critical point, there are three plus dimensions of larger, whether that have a, certainly one choice is a Z2 gate theory in three plus one dimension. Whether there's a bigger, yeah, that, that I don't know, whether, whether there's a additional emerging symmetry. So we have to expand this uh, Z2 gate theory in three plus one dimension to something more complicated. That is uh, not known, yeah. And emerging symmetry here does not mean like, like very large or rotation. Based on the yeah, that's a that's a that's a, another excellent question. Is that a, so far what I'm going to talk about is mainly emerging the internal symmetry. The, there is also emerging the space time symmetry, and the, in particular in, for this equal state, there's emerging the Lorentz symmetry, and that certainly should be very very important. And the, actually, there's a, a lot of missing part I don't understand probably coming from there. I did not include the emerging the space-time symmetry and Lorentz symmetry and the conformal symmetry. And uh, so they should be, should, should be included. But at the moment, I don't know how, but uh, uh, so I'm mainly considering the emergent internal symmetry. Okay. But, but, that is, uh, but the, that is absolutely crucial, yeah, to, to have more complete theory. Yeah. So, uh, so basically, that's kind of a motivation of the of the uh, of the of the uh, of this kind of uh, uh, topic. And uh, so, 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 what I plan to do is uh, first I do discuss this uh, some microscopic model of a tabular order, and then using this we can we can this, this uh, we can see uh, that they also provide an example of a, of a higher form symmetry, and uh, uh, and also uh, then we will. We will develop this uh, uh, macroscopic theory of uh, double large order, but basically it's uh, like an introduction for category theory, you know. So, so. And then, uh, then we will try to uh, uh, formulate uh, this a theory of a general symmetry, generalized symmetry in terms of uh, double large order or in terms of uh, uh, fusion higher category theory, which I really don't, don't know what what are they, <laughs> but uh, but uh, uh, I, I can. Tell you some about what I understand some through some simple examples, uh, and uh, and so here because this uh, topology order in one higher dimension is very closely related to the, to the symmetry, so we also call this uh, topology order in one higher dimension refer them as a categorical symmetry. You know, so it's it's just a just kind of new point of view uh, to to look at the uh, symmetry. And the last, then we will, we will apply this uh, emerging the symmetry uh, to study some gapless states. And uh, here, the main point of view is that uh, uh, whether there is uh, some other approach we call the uh, number theoretical approach. And uh, the, 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 the reason for this is uh, it's a problem. In, in one plus one dimension, we know that the scaling dimension is a rational number. And, uh, but usually when you compute these uh, uh, scaling dimensions, we can do the large gene expansion or epsilon expansion and things like that. But the compute uh, rational number or compute the integer number using perturbation is uh, kind of strange, you know. And uh, so, so therefore, if, if those are scaling dimensions are some, some good number, uh, uh, then there should, be, uh, there should be a different theory to, to capture this, uh, this scaling dimension. So, 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 so maybe, actually this so-called number theoretical approach actually is a, a conformal bootstrap, you know. Conformal bootstrap is, a, is, a, is belong to this type of approach. So maybe at the moment, I think uh, uh, maybe this, uh, this is a way to, uh, to, to combine general symmetry and conformal bootstrap. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a tool uh, to, to, to handle that. Uh, there's a lot of development uh, in one plus dimension and also in, um, more impressive in higher dimension. So maybe that's a, that could be a direction to go. 
Okay, so any question? Yeah, so that's a basic introduction. Uh. Okay, so let's uh, go to another one. Okay, so, so let's uh, uh, try to describe some kind of microscopic theory for uh, topological order. And uh, so we know that uh, this uh, 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 the symmetry breaking is a uh, is a uh, is a uh, uh, describe a lot of phase matter where we have a symmetry group of Hamiltonian and a symmetry group of ground states, which is a subgroup of a, a symmetry group of Hamiltonian. This pair of group describe a symmetry breaking phase. Because that's how we label symmetry breaking phase. The, the two by a pair of groups. Okay. So. Uh, so in the early days of high DC, uh, uh, there's a proposal, and Anderson had a proposal using this uh, uh, spin liquid with a spin charge separation uh, to describe a uh, high T superconductor, uh, where the whole line is a charge one spin zero boson whose condensation led to high TC. So that's maybe one way to, to get a high TC. And, uh, but the spin liquid is uh, something with uh, no feature. So there's a, again, there's a challenge or there's a problem issue, how to, how to characterize spin liquid. At the beginning, we find a way we can use this, uh, this kind of strange three spin other parameter to characterize a, a, a spin liquid. So that's break time growth symmetry, but not the spin rotation symmetry. So this kind of thing called the chiral spin liquid. But however, uh, However, using this model, we, we study some model, we find that, that uh, actually there's a several different chiral spin liquid with the same order parameter. So this uh, already is point out this, uh, this order parameter probably is not, not enough to fully characterize a spin liquid. So that's a, that's a sign of something, something new going on. And actually, uh, even before that, uh, uh, in a quantum Hall states, and uh, we have a lot of, uh, a 2D electron gas with a, with a very precisely quantized uh, plateau. And this plateau condensation became more accurate if your sample are dirtier. <laughs> and uh, so there's a, so sy sy symmetry do not play important role here, except maybe except, except charge conservation symmetry, which is not broken. And uh, so, so for quantum models that you have a different uh, plateau, then maybe the different phase of matter, but with the same symmetry. Again, we, we cannot use symmetry breaking to describe them. So this really the motivation for this notion of topology order, just describing those uh, different things beyond, beyond the symmetry breaking other parameter. So, but, uh, but that just say, what it is not, it's not a symmetry breaking other parameter, but the question what it is, uh, so one way to, to, to have a more po a positive description for this uh, topological order, actually is uh, putting this, uh, 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 the, the ground state on, on, the, on the system with, a, with, a, with no boundary, so like a sphere or torus or genius to remain surface. And because these states have energy gap, but we can study the ground state DNA state. It turns out the ground state DNA state may depend on different topology of a space. So that's something uh, non-trivial. So maybe this is a uh, this may be a positive way to describe a uh, topology order. So the but uh, but uh, the, the 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 funny thing about this uh, degeneracy is that uh, uh, is that uh, actually the ground they are not degenerate. <laughs> they are not exactly degenerate. They they are splitting, but splitting vanishes as system time goes infinity. This is different from the degeneracy from the symmetry. Degeneracy from the symmetry are exact, you know, but this is not exact. This is it's only became exact in some of them element. But however, uh, they are not exact, they are approximate. But this approximate degeneracy is very robust, means that you can add all the dirt to the system where the degeneracy is not lifted. Okay. So it's a, it's a, it's have this a topological stability. So we call this topological degeneracy. It can only change after phase transition, not by any perturbation. Yeah. So it's a, so this a, this is just a degeneracy not associated with the symmetry somehow. Then the question: What is associated to? 
so in 205, we, we've realized that uh, there's a there's a this generally maybe topological order may be related to entanglement. So the so so then we, because at the beginning, uh, you know, uh, when we started quantum house and topological order at the beginning, that's like a you know uh, uh, end of 1980s or starting 1990s. At that time, quantum information not very popular, so we didn't think about entanglement. And uh, by 2005, the uh, quantum information became very, very popular, became a fashion. Then we think, oh yeah, this uh, this uh, entanglement actually play a very big role here. So we should think about entanglement. Uh, uh, uh. And uh, so, so it turns out that uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, degeneracy actually is coming from entanglement. This topological degeneracy coming from entanglement. This is maybe the key message. As you remember, you know, uh, when I was in MIT. The John Frisco uh, company gave a uh, gave a colloquium. I think one thing I remember is that uh, this entanglement that means uh, if you know every part, you still don't know whole. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a magic of uh, entanglement. Yeah, uh, and actually, they think this magic gave us this uh, topology dependency because, uh, for example, for these uh, two, just two qubit states, we have these plus states and minus states. If you only look at the one qubit. You have the same entanglement density matrix, which is uh, like this. So this entanglement density matrix from the single qubits cannot distinguish whether you have a plus state or minus states. So this kind of thing generalized. So you could have a distinct quantum many body wave function. If you look at every local part of this wave function, they are identical, although the global quantum wave function is different, it's orthogonal. And so this is a, a this is a Knowing every part still do not know a whole is really the uh, is really what's behind this uh, topology general thing, and also behind all this topology of phase matter. I think this is a uh, this thing. So this uh, this realization very important. So we start thinking about the entanglement to see how to view topology order as a, some kind of a pattern of entanglement. So from this point of view, uh, uh, what kind of picture uh, do we get? Okay. So, so let's let's try to think about the entanglement. You know, uh, uh, you know, at the beginning, at the beginning, when I don't understand entanglement, I thought, what is entanglement? Entanglement is a superposition of two different states. So every state that entangled because every state can be expressed as superposition of every other two states. But actually, what I'm missing is that uh, entanglement requires another structure, it's tensor product structure. So, which is not very much emphasized in in, in, in physics quantum club course, uh, you know, the quantum mechanics not only is a linear algebra, it's actually a linear algebra with a tensor product decomposition. I think the second part is very important. So it's such emphasize in quantum information theory. So therefore a local quantum system actually is a, it's like this. We have a small Hilbert space. The tensor product of small Hilbert space give us a global Hilbert space. And then we have this uh, uh, Hamiltonian is given by local operator, which act on this small Hilbert space and maybe nearby small Hilbert space. So this kind of a general structure of, uh, of this uh, uh, quantum system. And uh, then the ground state in this, in this sense is not a single state of single system because we take some of that limit. So here we imagine we have a sequence of system with an increasing size. So when you say a ground state of a thermal dynamic system, we are actually talking about a sequence of system and a sequence of states. Okay. And this is also important to define what is a gap state. Because for the mathematician, every finite system is gap because the spectrum are discrete. Okay. But, but however, in physics, the gap system really describing a sequence. When you're taking n go to infinite limit, there's a window of a gap remain finite, and maybe some, some state below the window became more and more degenerate. This, this kind of a limit. So that's called the gap states. Okay. And uh, then what is the phase? The phase are equivalence relation between ground states. But here, actually, the ground states are really not a single state. We should really say the ground state is subspace. Is the equivalent relation between two ground states subspace. And this equivalent relation, it can be described by this adiabatic evolution. If two ground states subspace can be adiabatic, 
evolve into each other, we say they are below the same phase. And uh, I think there is a theorem in quantum information theory that uh, the, this adiabatic quantum evolution can be approximated by the quantum circuit, this local unitary transformation. So then we say that the uh, two ground states connect by local unitary circuit, they are equivalent. So there are certainly a lot of detail. This circuit should be finite depths and et cetera. That we're not really going to that. Okay. So, so, from, so, so from this uh, point of view, we see that uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, gap, the quantum phase, are really just a sequence of a system. And uh, for each system size, and um, uh, so we have two sequence of a Hamiltonian, non one. And uh, then for each, for each size, we have a, uh, we have a ground state connected by the local unitary unit transformation. So those are, and, uh, and then we say these two sequence are equivalent. Okay, so that is, uh, uh, so that is uh, this, uh, uh, that's a definition of quantum phase. Okay. So why go through this? Because I want to define what is the liquid. <laughs> You know, in this definition, we will see uh, there's a uh, we, we need to uh, there, there's a, there's a problem because this definition is okay if you have translation invariance. Because when you have translation invariance, there's no issue of increasing system size. You're just increasing system size by repeating this unit. However, we now we say that symmetry is not important. Suppose we don't have translation symmetry, then you have issue of increases in system size. The system with two different sides, maybe in different phase. So one is quantum power state, another is for a magnetic state. You know, that could be, could be possible. So, so this definition doesn't have a problem. If you don't have translation symmetry, there's no, there's no horizontal connection. Okay. So, uh, so therefore the, uh, so therefore this, uh, uh, this, uh, 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 so therefore to uh, the quantum liquid is really trying to add some horizontal connection. How to increase the system size, and uh, so in this case, uh, one 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 can one can generalize this equivalence relation. We know that the two states are equivalent if they are connected by log unitary. Now here we have to define the two states with different sizes are equivalent. What, what do we mean by that? So here we say that uh, if you can dissolve a uh, product state, if you can add a product state to increase system size. Then after doing local unitary to dissolve those actual product states into the, the system, and uh, this whole process is seamless, seamless, we can do that. Then, then, we, uh, then this, is, this is a liquid state. So in this sense, this uh, tabular order are really the quantum liquid state in that sense. It can absorb any product states. So in some sense, mathematically, it really means that uh, the space time uh, geometry is a. Uh, I, I don't know what, what to say. That it really has something to say say about the space time geometry. It means a uh, 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 certain feature, some discrete feature. Yeah, we can say the lattice have a lot of features, but when you look at the lattice from far away, it looks like a manifold. The manifold ignore those features, ignore certain features. So, so being able to dissolve this product state. It turn lattice into manifold, something like that. There, so there's some more uh, cross grain way to look at the space with a we see less structure, and only those less structure are important, and uh, so that's a liquid. So from this point of view, you can see that if a state cannot dissolve this, uh, cannot dissolve product states, that means uh, uh, some kind of a space time structure should be included. And essentially, we, we know that this uh, a fractal phase have this uh, relation structure as cat. So that's kind of in line with this kind of uh, a picture. Yes. Can you say why a, like a, a Fermi surface would not have this property? Yeah, Fermi surfaces cannot dissolve product states. Is that obvious? Uh, yes, in a sense, when you look at the Fermi surface, uh, you know, the Fermi surface have those, uh, those uh, points, you know, and uh, the DC point. And when you're in large system, uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, <laughs> huh? Yeah. Uh, 
in a sense, let me say this way. If you dissolve this product is a gap, it's like you combine a small system with a gap state, then enlarge it, but then you don't increase the Fermi surface size. Yeah. So 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 if a KF is a fixed, no, not KF is fixed, the the number of states enclosed by Fermi surface is fixed, then it's okay. But that's not our limit. Our limit is the KF is fixed. The number of states included in the Fermi surface is getting more and more. And we we don't we yeah, we, we cannot do that. Yes. yes. So that is that that is the reason. But then whether Fermi surface have a full relation structure or not. Uh, whether Fermi liquid should be reviewed as a theory on the manifold or not, that's all interesting question. Then this is almost think, saying that uh, the, maybe the Fermi liquid theory should not be viewed as a theory on the manifold, but on something, I don't know, this kind of crazy stuff, you know. <laughs> uh, but for fact, certainly, is, uh, we know the answer is not manifold, but uh, Fermi liquid, we don't know. Yeah, so that is, uh, uh, yeah, that, 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 that's the issue. Okay, so so certainly there's a, a so one one simple example of this a uh, uh, non liquid state will be just a stacking quantum Hall state together, you know, it, it, uh, then 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 it's a non liquid. Okay, and another non liquid is, uh, is now you know is uh, the fraction states. You know, uh, uh, there's a uh, uh, there is this uh, uh, yeah this uh, this is Shaman's uh, have this model and the Haas here Katak also have this. Uh, a uh, cubic code model have a fractal structure. It's a really uh, surprising uh, structure. And uh, and uh, I will not go into in de in detail in this. Just uh, just to say that uh, there's all kind of entanglement structure. And uh, so uh, uh, so Fermi liquid belong to this uh, so-called uh, S source introduced by Shringle and uh, McGreevy. That is a uh, so for example, for liquid state to increase their size, we just add dissolving the product states. Here, dissolving product state is not enough. To increase size, you have to make a two copies of the same states plus some product states. Then we can increase size. And this cubic code is even stranger. We have to, we have to add something with, uh, with this uh, S2 states. You know? So it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of amazing. This entire structure is, uh, is very, very rich. And, uh, and in, the, in here, basically, and I'm describing this just say that uh, I'm only consider those those the first simple case. These are liquid states. Yeah. Okay. So from here, uh, then then we can say that uh, this uh, uh, this uh, this uh, long range entanglement will be this uh, 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 can, uh, this uh, yeah this topology order can be viewed as a pattern for entanglement. Uh, certainly, uh, uh, the different shorter entangled state means. Uh, that means uh, a shorter entangled state means uh, a state which can be connected to product states by these uh, local unitaries. Then it turns out all the shorter entangled states are connected by local unitaries among each other. So the shorter entangled states only have one phase. Then the longer entangled state means uh, the state which cannot be connected to local unitaries. Okay. It turns out that uh, there's uh, many different uh, longer entangled states which cannot connect to each other by local unitaries. So that's actually this kind of entangle, this this really entanglement picture of a topology order. <laughs> so this uh, is really described this a, a microscopic a point of view of microscopic definition of topology order from this uh, uh, quantum circuit. And uh, right now there's a big issue is that uh, uh, we guess the macroscopic theory is like the category theory, but how to derive the categories from microscopic? Uh, yeah, this part is totally open. Yeah, but. Uh, but at least we have a definition in a microscopic theory. Then there's a similar related thing is that uh, when you have a symmetry, then uh, the even shorter entangled states uh, can, can, divide, can be divided into many different phase. And this gave us so-called SPT states. So, so that is uh, uh, for shorter entangled states, we, it's connected by local entry without symmetry. But however, when you have a symmetry, you have to require your local unitary transformation to respect the symmetry. Then maybe there are shorter entangled states which are, cannot be connected by, by local unitary respecting symmetry. So that's gave you this uh, 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 SPD state. So those kind of, uh, uh, those kind of entanglement uh, structure uh, I'm going to uh, talk about. 
So, so now, now let's concentrate on this, uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, topologically uh, ordered state, means a uh, long ring entangled states. So what is a uh, uh, what is this uh, 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 simplest picture to build a long running entangled states? And certainly the product state is not long running entangled state. The single product does not work. So we want to do the superposition product state to build entanglement. But we cannot overdo it if you consider all superposition. We basically cut a state of a, a horizontal spin. Okay. So here the idea is that. Uh, we sum over a subset of a configuration. Okay, so here's a lot of game one can play, and uh, I don't know whether we exhaust the game or not. Uh, so one natural thing we can do string. We can say spin up is a background. We can say spin down from a string. Then we sum over all the loops, loop of a spin down. So that's one way to select a partial configuration. Yeah, I can imagine you can select. All the crazy sort of partial configuration, it may it may works. Uh, we get some new states. I don't know. Yeah. And uh, uh, for example, we can consider a state like a superposition of all loops with equal weight, or maybe superposition of all loops with a plus minus sign depending on whether the number loop is even or odd. Or maybe we can have superposition loops depending on phase factor raised to the number of loops. And uh, yeah, last one looks uh, actually this uh, these two, the first and the second looks uh, maybe illegal because uh, you can write down such a wave function, but to know number of loops is non-trivial. You have to follow all the loops, so it's a global information. So therefore, one may say actually that's a rule game. Writing down wave function not enough. You have to you have to argue that this wave function can be locally specified. Yeah. It turns out that the last one, this wave function cannot be locally specified. So there is no local homotony realizing that. Maybe only non-local homotony realizing that. But it turns out the first two are, are locally specifiable. But the, but the second are only in two dimension, not in three dimension. You know, so those the, are kind of interesting things. So there's a lot of game one can that can play here. And so those kind of uh, uh, those kind of wave function may have a long range entanglement, uh, maybe a way to build a topological order. Yeah, certainly one natural thing is whether one can have a fractal or some more interesting geometry. Certainly we can do brain. The brain is uh, uh, easy. I uh, can do, instead of string, can do brain. There you can get some higher gate theory or things like that. And, uh, but, uh, but whether something even beyond the string, beyond the brain, whether there are some other choice of a geometric object, you can build this long ring entanglement. But this kind of a description looks uh, uh, very artificial. And uh, uh, but uh, to, to have an experimental realization uh, seems difficult. But actually, this uh, string picture is not too far away from the experiments. In a sense, we can have uh, this uh, like a uh, uh, spin one half. They may pair into dimer due to this uh, antiferromagnetic interaction. And then this uh, spin liquid can be viewed as dimer liquid. And uh, then the, the things that uh, the dimer liquid and the string liquid seems very different, but actually they are very close. We can choose a, a single, a, a particular dimer configuration like the red one as my reference. Then we compare every other dimer configuration with this uh, red one, like this blue one. We will compare the two, just lay it one on top of each other. We get this picture. Then you'll find the red and the blue form of strings. So therefore, dimer fluctuation can be viewed as a string fluctuation. Yeah. So, so, so therefore, dimer liquid and string liquid are very much closely related. The only distinction is the following. In this string liquid, we have a, it's a, it's a superposition of arbitrary uh, string. But in the dimer string liquid, it's a superposition of a certain type of string, basically close to packed string. And uh, so, so dynamics are, is uh, somewhat different, but, uh, but there are some relation. You know, if, so the, so for the dimer liquid may, may not be liquid, maybe you can dimer solid. However, if you find a way to make it dimer liquid, then dimer liquid is a string liquid. So that, that really gives rise to uh, a long range entanglement and topological order.
And furthermore, actually, diamond liquid have also another feature, which is a, described as a square lattice. That the diamond liquid, in the first example, on the Kagema lattice, the diamond liquid corresponds to string liquid with unorientable string. The string is not oriented. But however, on this square lattice, we have very special dimer. The dimer always connect, uh, you can give reference device on each link from A sub lattice to B sub lattice. And then you can uh, then compare to this, uh, 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 this, uh, this link, you can, you can, this red dimer and the blue dimer, you can, you can say have orientation. So it turns out at the end, it turned out to be the, uh, turn out to be this oriented string liquid. So then the, 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 the thing that, uh, then for this kind of dimer liquid is orientable string liquid. So that gave you right to the U1 gate theory. Unoriented string gave you Z2 gate theory. So, so yeah, this example just to say that just uh, this a uh, very uh, rough consideration, you can get a lot of uh, intuition and to get, to get some kind of uh, uh, topological states. Okay. So this is, uh, uh, so let's, uh, uh, yeah, let, let's go to this, uh, this first two example just a little bit more. So that is uh, this, uh, 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 so basically local rule is this uh, so-called the local dancing rule. So the, the, the string can change its shape. Uh, so, so, so this is a uh, uh, this uh, this uh, uh, we have Hamiltonian which allows string to change its shape, basically, and also we allow we have, have Hamiltonian which allows string to reconnect like this, but with the same face. So those are kind of a dancing rule to describe a ground state wave function. Yeah. Okay. It turns out that uh, this, this, both rules are local rules, so therefore we can design local Hamiltonian to specify this kind of rule in the ground state wave function in terms of projector, something like that. And then let's give us this global wave function, just a superposition of all string uh, with equal the superposition of all, all loops. Yeah. And actually the second wave function also okay. We just modify the second reconnection rule. Uh, after reconnection, the two wave function have this minus sign. And, uh, and this is uh, again something local. We can specify this locally. And then that's provide a second wave function that's a superposition for all loops, but with a plus minus sign depend on even the oddness of loops. Yeah. So although, uh, although counting how many loop is a global operation, but determining whether the loop is even or odd is a local operation. So therefore this is okay. But interestingly, this local operation only works in two dimensions. <laughs> in three dimensions, like this example, uh, we, we have we have a string which overlap on, each, uh, on top of each other. And then the reconnection here do not change the number of loops if from this example. So, so that means uh, the second wave function is legal only for two dimensional loop liquid, but not legal for three dimensional loop liquid. Uh, so, so, so there's a, a some feature. It turns out that uh, this uh, first uh, topology order is described by this uh, called the Z2 topology order, or the Tor code model, is really uh, is really a uh, 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 Z2 gauge theory. And the second one, this uh, with a minus sign, uh, this uh, topology is a double Samian uh, topology order. So it's a uh, it's double Samian is basically described by this U1 cross U1 uh, transaminant theory. Uh, that's a Luanda effective theory. <laughs> okay, so so we know that this uh, the Z two topology can be realized by torque code model exactly. That's that's a soluble model. I think uh, I think probably everyone is uh, familiar with torque code model, but here I will describe this uh, because uh, <coughs> this is also a good example uh, for the higher symmetry. So uh, 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 so I, let me go through this uh, a little bit. Okay. And uh, for, for the Tarkon model, we have two terms. One is what we call the Q term, the U star term, and the plaquet term. This uh, star term basically is a product of, of a sigma z uh, for the three link around a vertex. So here the spin live on the link, spin live on the link. So, so basically like we say up spin is a background, a down spin is a string. So the product equal to one, a Q to one means uh, 
the, the we have incoming string and outgoing string. They're always a paired. So the string always connect, always a string passing through vertex connect, always connected. There's no end of string, basically. And this plaquette term is a product of X operator around the, a, a plaquette. That's a flipping the spin. So to adding a small loop or changing the shape of a string. So this is a string hopping term. Uh, this is a string enforcing term, enforcing the closed string condition, okay. And uh, then these two terms, uh, you know, uh, commute to each other. So this Hamiltonian is insoluble. Okay. And uh, so, uh, so the many bodies uh, energy spectrum of a Tor code model basically is uh, is uh, this. The, because those operators commute commute each other. So granted, uh, given by this uh, uh, eigen, uh, eigen common eigen state of those Q operator and F operator with eigen value one. So that's a ground states. Uh, Excited state corresponds to some Q operator or some F operator have a negative one eigen value. So that's excitation. Okay. So basically that's what I'm describing here. That's a so uh, we have a quasi particle where the with the Q became minus one or F became the minus one, the energy gap will be two U or two G. You know, that that's that's a quasi particle excitation. Okay. Uh, however, what is interesting uh, in this model is that uh, the uh, the ground states are really equal with the superposition of loops. But however, on the torus, we have four sectors because number of loop wrapping around the x direction, y direction can be even or off. This distinction is cannot be seen locally. If you look at the wave function locally, you don't know whether it's total even or total off. But the globally, that's crucial. That the wave function are very different uh, for these uh, four sector. They are orthogonal wave functions. So this is a kind of intuitive way to see that we have these uh, locally indistinguishable states, but the globally orthogonal uh, wave function. Okay. And here, I just want to emphasize one thing: is that uh, uh, although the operator Q and F can be plus or minus one. But they cannot be, be be minus one, one by one. If one Q operator became minus one, there must be another Q operator also became minus one. This minus one always appear in pairs, which I already explained just next page. But the the most but this is important because those those are topological extension. They cannot be created alone. So that means uh, the uh, in, from the experimental point of view, this uh, the the energy gap measured by thermal activation. Is one half of energy gap measured from a scattering experiment. So I think maybe this is a uh, maybe this is a, a probably the simplest way to 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 determine uh, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, this topological extension. The activation energy gap and the scattering energy gap uh, is is different. Yeah. Uh, so maybe uh, so to see why this uh, this. Uh, Q and F can only be uh, become minus one in pairs. Uh, actually, there's a uh, uh, there's a uh, we can have these uh, string operators because of the uh, because those extensions are created by by string operators. Uh, so, for example, we can have a string operator, which is a product of a, of a sigma x along this link. Then we can see that uh, uh, this operator commute with F and Q in the middle of string. But on the commute with F and Q, actually, actually on the commute with the Q operator, this is Z, at the end of string. So therefore, Q operator at the end of string is a flip sign. The sign is flipped. And so therefore, this string created two uh, Q operator extension. So that's appearing pairs. And another F operator extension is really, is a string in the dual lattice. So there's a string in the dual lattice. Rather than connecting vertex, we're connecting center of a plaquette. And the string in the dual lattice, we have a product of sigma z. And this operator flip this f operator, sine f operator, and create a two of them. So therefore, those uh, topological extensions are created by, by strings. So this is a, a, a this is maybe a, it's a general uh, structure. So we say that uh, this uh, 
this, uh, this, this, this red string operator creating this uh, type E particle. Okay. Then the string in the dual lattice, which got Z string operator creating this M particle. And uh, then we can have a combination of two strings, the bounce of two strings, which basically is a red string plus it's a framing. The framing of a red string just displays red string a little bit. This is a displaced string can be viewed as a string in the dual lattice, like this, this thin blue line can be viewed as a string on this, on this dual lattice. Yeah. And so, so therefore, we can have a product X and product Z based on this rule. And then this is a bound state of E and M, which give us a fermion. Actually, this F is turns out to be the uh, to be the fermion quasi particle. Okay. So 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 this so this is this really uh, this really uh, uh, example for this uh, uh, this uh, 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 the, the topological extension and the and the quasi particle. Okay. So I just mentioned this uh, this uh, this F particle is a fermion. So how do we determine it's a fermion? You know, the certainly the string operator itself is a boson because there's fli spin flipping. It's a part of X, part of Z. This operator is a bosonic operator. But as I mentioned that the single string operator creates two particles. So each particle has a possibility to be fermion, you know, although combined is a boson. So determine whether it's a boson or fermion, and one can using this so-called a uh, uh, hopping algebra. We can view the string operator as a hopping operator of this uh, topological extension. You know, it's transfer particle from one, one string to another and string. We apply this uh, string operator. It's a hopping operator. So it's really uh, it's really a, a point of view that uh, the statistics is not a kinematics. It's a dynamical property. It's a determined by Hamiltonian. So so the hopping operator determines statistics. So that's really based on this kind of a picture. And this hopping operator have some algebra and this algebra of hopping operator determine statistics. So this is probably true. And recently I think this picture is generalized to, to string uh, extension. In the string station also you have operator which is, which is changing shape of string. The algebra of this uh, shape changing, a uh, string shape changing operator can also be fermionic. So, so they define, define the notion for fermion can be, uh, some string can also be fermionic. So there's a, a story like that. But for the particle, it's a, it's a simpler. Okay. So the way uh, to, to, to do that, uh, we consider four sites. This uh, basically A, B, C, D, we have four sites. Okay. Then we apply, then we so assume we originally we have two particles at A site and D site. Then you apply this uh, hopping from A to B first, then hopping from B to C next, then hopping from D to B. We apply these three hopping operator. The final configuration is that the A hop to B, hop to C. So, so this black one became here and the, the white one from D to B became here. Okay. Then we can apply these three hopping operators in a different order. So here's a red, green, blue. Now we can do blue, green, red, just a reverse of the order. We will do that. It turns out we, will, we, we have a white one, D to B, B to C. So white one became here. Then the black one from A to B became here. You can see the final state have exchange. Okay. So, so therefore, so if this, uh, if this uh, two order, this, uh, this uh, blue, green, red, and the red, green, blue, it's the same, have the same face, then it's the boson. However, if this, uh, if this two order of hopping operator have a negative face, it's a fermion. It turns out that this one have a chirality, you know, this, uh, uh, this, this, this uh, no chiral. So this face can be e to the i theta, it's also fine. Then you, you get an you get onion, okay. So, and then we can check that, uh, so this 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 a combined string, this type F string operator, uh, just mentioned. For this type of E, type M string operator is a boson. And type F string operator really gave us a, a, a fermion. Yeah. 
So this is the way, this hopping operator algebra uh, is a way to determine uh, boson on fermion. So maybe the last though is we can, I can, I can, I can try, I try to using this example uh, to discuss some uh, 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 higher form symmetry. Okay. So, uh, so the reason that uh, this uh, this uh, string operator create a two quasi particle rather than create something extended string like extension, really because the string operator commute with Hamiltonian in the middle of string, they do not commute with Hamiltonian only at the end of string. So therefore, when applied to the ground state, they only create something at the end. Middle part, the commute with Hamiltonian do not increase energy. Okay. So another way to say that if this is a string operator from a loop, they will commute with Hamiltonian. Okay. And that is a symmetry. So any operator commute with Hamiltonian is a symmetry. Okay. So this is a, so amazingly, this Turcotte model also is a one of the simplest model to have a higher symmetry. Okay. Which we'll really realize later. And uh, so the highest may have this property. They actually commute with any loops. Any loops. Hamiltonian commute with any loops. So not, not like a zero symmetry. There's only one transformation. Here have a bunch of transformation for arbitrary loops. They all commute with Hamiltonian. So that's a one, one character of a higher uh, symmetry. Okay. So uh so because there's a higher symmetry, we can show that uh, the, the particle model have a ground state tendency just from this, uh, uh, from this symmetry point of view. It's really because the uh, Hamiltonian commutes with the loops, but sometimes these loop operators do not commute with themselves. And uh, this is something also quite interesting. Uh, it turns out that for this kind of E loop and M loop operator, uh, uh, they have phase factor depend on number of crossing. But when we have two loops, the number of crossings is always even. Okay. So it looks like uh, this is uh, just a uh, nothing, you know, it's always even, so this is already commute. But actually this is true only for contrast loop. For contrast loop, their number of crossing always even. So this so this is relation have no meaningless for contrast loop. They are meaningful only for non-contrast loop. So therefore, when the space time have non when space have non-trivial topology, they have a non contrastable loops. And then like an E loop in X direction, M loop in Y direction. And then they have only one intersection. Then they do not commute. But however, both loop commute is Hamiltonian. So that means uh, 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 the ground state uh, subspace from the repetition of this algebra. And this algebra have only one irreducible representation, which is two dimensional. So ground state DNRC must be two. But turns out it's a four because we have another set of a relation. Why is the E in X direction, M in Y direction, or Y in uh, X direction, E in Y direction. But anyway, there's an exchange X and Y. So you have two sets with anti community algebra, which give us four four DNRC. So that's one way uh, to understand the ground state tendency or tower code model coming from this uh, uh, this uh, algebra. Yes. So this symmetry seems to be very special to a specific model. Yes. And but you want to describe something more general beyond specific model. So how much of this survive? Exactly. So this so this is a. Uh, uh, yeah, this is uh, this is thing. I, yeah, I, I saw the same thing. thing. <laughs> uh, and uh, in kind of matter, we don't have uh, this kind of symmetry. Why, care? Why we care? It's, uh, it's just uh, totally theoretical. And, uh, but, uh, but unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, is uh, this one can be emergent. So we don't, so th actually this, uh, uh, yeah, uh, this higher symmetry can be emergent symmetry. And uh, so, so they became useful. And uh, yeah. Maybe that maybe that's the answer. So therefore, uh, so almost I almost want to say that uh, whenever you see gapless states, there may be emerging a higher symmetry there, and uh, then including those all those emerging symmetry and emerging higher symmetry and uh, all other non-invertible symmetry together, 
collecting all these dimensions together, maybe that's a kind of a specify the gapless state. At least we have a lot of more information. And is that, is that statement known or is it a conjecture? It's a conjecture, yeah. And uh, 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 yeah, yeah, there, there's, a, there's a reason uh, why this is uh, maybe true. Yeah. Uh, uh, at the moment, I don't say it's a conjecture, or maybe wishful thinking, whatever. It's a, it's a, it's a, yeah. It's really try to try to say we have a, so much symmetries, and then we start to wish the symmetry may specify gapless state completely. So we'll see how much this is okay. Yeah, it's just it's just a, it's a yeah. I'm trying to say this may be a, a interesting direction to think about. Yeah. But 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 because they said, but certainly we have an example, the higher symmetry is emerging. We have those examples. Yeah. Okay. So the uh uh okay. And so what is uh, interesting for this model is that uh, um when you when you describe design this way, you allow to add a perturbation to the Tor code model. So you can add some impurity here, an impurity here. Uh, as long as the impurity leaves some channel connecting the x direction and the y direction, leaves some channel open, you have three up the along in that region, which on that commute, then you have exact ground state energy. Yeah. So for at least for those impurity, for those uh, non-connected impurity, the ground state energy yeah. is protected. But actually, it stays stronger. Even when the impurity all connected, basically, you, if you, even when you break those uh, higher symmetry uh, at the lattice level, the ground state still survive. It's a, it's a. So it's a. So it's became an interesting uh, situation. Do we think ground state is coming from symmetry, symmetry, or not coming from symmetry? You know, at the beginning, I said it had nothing to do with symmetry. It's a, you know, break all the symmetry is still there. So it's a topological, it's not symmetry. But now uh, we, we start to change the, our opinion. And uh, actually we are writing a paper uh, 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 about this. About this. Is that uh, this, uh, maybe this also known that uh, this, uh, this uh, emerging the higher symmetry is uh, always exact. Yeah, this, you know, when well, now we have an emergent higher symmetry, then at the low energy, we have a higher symmetry. But they are actually they have not only there, is that they are exact, really exact. Really exact means solid. For finite system, they are not exact. But as system size go to infinity, they became exact below certain energy scale. And this is true, seems this true for higher symmetry, but not for zero symmetry. For zero symmetry, this is not true. For zero symmetry, we may have emergent symmetry below certain energy scale, but this symmetry may be approximate. And as your lower the energy may become more and more accurate, but for any finite energy, they are approximate. And so this is a, I already thought that maybe this is a general feature for emergent symmetry. Emergent symmetry means they are approximate. They became exact when, go, when the energy goes go to zero. But the emerging higher symmetry is different. That is, uh, even for finite energy, they became exact, but in a thermodynamic limit. The symmetry breaking term is suppressed by system size, not by uh, some power of energy. Uh, so, so, so therefore, uh, so therefore, this, uh, uh, this exact emerging higher symmetry, you can use that to explain the degeneracy. Yeah. So it's the same in terms of gap states or for gapless states as well. Yeah, that's a, a, probably even true for gapless states. Yeah, and uh, but certainly to prove that for gapless states uh, is more challenging. And uh, uh, yeah, yeah, this is really kind of beyond my mathematical skill. There's a, uh, the physically is really that uh, there's a, in the Coulomb phase, we have an emerging photon. We know that emerging photon is topological. We can we can add any perturbation to the lattice model. Uh, we, we still have gapless photon. 
So this is a sign that uh, this, uh, even for gapless space, this uh, emergent continuous symmetry remains to be black. Yeah. For liquid. Uh, for liquid, yeah. Uh, dimension matters. Actually, for non-liquid states, it's like you have to reduce dimensions. Uh, so maybe uh, uh, lower dimensions, this thing may not work. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, this, uh, uh, yeah, the center does a lot of issue. Uh, for example, for discrete symmetry, maybe this is statement true even for one dimension. Maybe for continuous symmetry, probably you need uh, you need a higher dimension. Yeah, there's a there's a many details, uh, 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 but uh, but in generally, uh, this, is, this is a feature. Yeah. And this is not just for one form of symmetry, but for yeah, for any. Um, so amazingly, that's a yeah. That, that uh, I, I find it's quite interesting because uh, uh, only zero symmetry is special. <laughs> so the so the impression from zero symmetry is wrong actually, and uh, for for higher symmetry, even for non-invertible symmetry, I think it's true. For for higher symmetry, uh, uh, they are all exact. The only only zero part. Suppose you have a you have a you have a you have a lattice system with both zero symmetry and the higher symmetry, and then we will add add perturbations to break them. Then you find the zero symmetry part may be broken weakly, but other part would survive, and uh, so that that is a, a, a picture. So only zero symmetry is broken by 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 lattice. So so because of this so maybe the this higher symmetry become more useful uh, uh, to study low energy uh, dynamics. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so, uh, so maybe this is my last slide here. Is that a? And uh, so, so because this, uh, this, uh, okay. Let me put this. Uh, so it turns out this, uh, this two symmetry called a one, one form symmetry. Yeah, they call the one symmetry because. Uh, they are generated by the co-dimensional one extended operator. Yeah. So if you if symmetry applies for every site that co-dimension zero, that's zero symmetry. Uh, uh, in two-dimensional space, we have a loops that's co-dimension one, they call the one symmetry. So for the Tor code model, we have a Z2 one symmetry of E type, another Z2 one symmetry of M type. We have a two uh, one symmetry. Okay. It turns out that uh, the ground state does spontaneously break these two one symmetry. Okay. And then, then here there's an issue. What do you mean by spontaneous breaking for one symmetry? Okay. Uh, I think there's many definitions. So here we'll, we'll follow one definition that the, the symmetry is spontaneous broken if the symmetry transformation is not proportional to identity in a ground state subspace. Uh, it's like in uh, like a uh, like four magnets uh, spin down. We have spin up, spin down. Certainly, the symmetry operation is a uh, trivial if you act on the spin up plus spin down. But the real spin up will transform transformation. You can spin down. So there's a non-trivial action. Okay. So here similar. So as long as the, in the ground subspace, the symmetry transformation is not proportional identity, then we say they they the spontaneous broken. And this is true and uh, for these uh, two uh, two states that uh, even for the Z operator, we have four-fold degeneracy. And this uh, this uh, string operator sometimes is the one, sometimes the minus one. So they are not uh, they are not identity. And uh, so so therefore this uh, so therefore this uh, four-fold degenerate ground state can be viewed as a spontaneous breaking of these two Z2 one one symmetry. Okay. So uh 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 uh, so, so therefore, yeah, we go back uh, a circle. Uh, you know, topology I introduced to try to go beyond the Landau Ginsburg, <laughs> and now we come back to Landau Ginsburg. So this is also kind of, it's a spontaneous breaking of a higher symmetry, and we also understand why uh, uh, why why ground state density is exact because emergence of a higher symmetry is exact. So therefore, their spontaneous breaking also provides exact ground state DMLC. So there's another way to understand the robustness of a degenerate ground state from the from exact emergence of a higher symmetry. But well, this is not true for zero symmetry. Okay. And uh, uh, and actually, there's a uh, there's a, a, 
uh, kind of this definition, uh, and there's a uh, there's another another thing is that uh, we can say that uh, uh, the ground states is a uh, it's a symmetric, you know, uh, if they are not degenerate. And this sounds like a trivial statement, uh, you know. Uh, to define, uh, let me see. Uh, okay, you know, to define a, a state is symmetric or not, it seems very easy, you know, and but somehow it's sometimes not easy uh, because sometimes later we'll 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 go go there. That sometimes we define the symmetry not using symmetry transformation, using something else. So we don't have symmetry transformation. Then to determine whether that symmetry is a broken or not broken became tricky. Okay, and then, then here there's a more general way to determine whether symmetry is broken or not. That is, uh, if your ground state is a non degenerate on any space topology, then you are sure that ground state is a non degenerate. So, actually, this, uh, this picture is also important in the sense that uh, uh, that also means that state is a product state. You can see. Product state is a notion of a microscopic theory. We have a lattice. But when you talk to mathematicians, they have no lattice. They want to have a microscopic de de definition for everything. Uh, also in quantum field theory is similar. So how do you define the product state in quantum field theory, which you don't have UV completion, you don't have cutoff. The one way to do so is that if you put your quantum field theory on, on a space with object topology, you show your quantum field theory have a non degenerate ground states, you can claim your quantum field theory have a product ground states. <laughs> so this is kind of uh, similar. Uh, so this, this is a, 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 a more general notion. Okay. And uh, so, uh, 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 yeah, yeah. So that, that, that's basically the, uh, the, the point uh, I, I want to say, uh, yeah. So maybe in the in, in the in next week, uh, so we will we'll go into a little bit more about this uh, this higher symmetry about their charge operator and uh, and uh, and this this also became an example of anomaly and etc. Yeah, then 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 yeah, maybe, maybe yeah, we will end here. Yeah. So any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, here I just making a statement. I think uh, to have a more general description, I need to develop this uh, holographic picture, uh, so you can get uh, you can see more. But uh, uh, but the one but the one simple way to see this, maybe almost make it a trivial, is that uh, uh, for the for the zero form symmetry, the charge creation operator is a uh, uh, it's a point operator. Okay. For higher form symmetry, the charge creation operator uh, 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 kind of extended. And, uh, and uh, let me see. Um, and uh, so, so to break symmetry, you need to create a charge. And but this extent not only contractible extent, it should be non-contractible extended. A small loop don't don't break higher symmetry. You need non-contractible loop to break higher symmetry. So you need to add operator for non-contractible loop to to break it. And so so from here that's non-local. So that's a, that's a rule out by by your, by your assumption. And so, so this is the that, that I think that's a key difference. Yeah, to create a non-zero charge, you need a you need this a uh, uh, lamp loop operator. Yeah, and there's a there's other uh, uh, way to see this. Is uh, let me see whether we have any reference here. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think in these two paper, there's a there's a kind of mathematical physical way to prove the examines of ground degeneracy. And if you follow the proof, there's a uh, you can see the shadow or sign of those uh, 
this emerging higher symmetry. Because when you show that the ground inertia is a robust against any perturbation, that's almost the same same proof can be can, can be used to show the emerging higher symmetry is exact. So these two are very closely related. And this is independent of the topology of the space-time. No, yeah, it do not depend on topology space-time. No, no, the proof I, I don't know. Uh, uh, the the proof itself may depend on that, but the physics you know, I think we think do not depend on that. The the, the idea do not depend on that, but the, the actual proof sometimes you may use some trick which you depend on based on topology, but. Uh, I, but I, we think that as a physics, this should be generally true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think we should end here. <laughs> Thank you.